Item Number SCP-4495 Object Class Keter Site Responsible USNBBR Site 56 Director Dr. Agatha Drummond Research Head Dr. Rivka Yakoni Assigned Task Force Not Applicable Level 4 Threat Level Yellow Following the regular implementation of Procedure 610 Sinclair, SCP-4495 has achieved sufficient ectoentropic stability and is no longer considered at risk of instigating an NK-class scenario. Legacy containment procedures are kept on record in the event that 610 Sinclair is no longer viable. Special Containment Procedures Relevant personnel are to execute Procedure 610 Sinclair on a daily basis, and maintenance personnel are to inspect SCP-4495's containment chamber on a bi-weekly basis. SCP-4495 is contained inside of a three-tiered cell, each tier separated by a graded floor. SCP-4495 resides on the top tier, strapped into an alcove in the southern wall. SCP-4495's stomach is positioned at an acute angle with respect to the floor, allowing SCP-4495-1 to immediately fall through the grating upon generation. To prevent the buildup of stuck instances of SCP-4495-1, the grating is to be sprayed hourly by a series of built-in pressure washers. The top tier is to remain refrigerated in the interest of reducing miasma. The middle tier contains a combination grinder and incinerator. Instances of SCP-4495-1 are forced into the machine through a funnel, emerging from the bottom of the temporary inert paste. This process takes under 10 minutes. The bottom tier contains implements required for Procedure 610 Sinclair. Should Procedure 610 Sinclair become non-viable, SCP-4495-1 paste is to be pressed as thinly as possible, vacuum sealed, and stored in Site-56's provisional storage wing. Relevant personnel are to read Document 4495-610 at the nearest opportunity. SCP-4495 is the partially decomposed corpse of an unidentified cryptid. Superficially, it resembles a bipedal pig clad in regal wear, reclining upon a throne. However, closer examination reveals that the throne, figure, and raiment all constitute a single and mobile organism, composed of keratin, bone, and skin. SCP-4495's ventral torso is ruptured. Periodic contractions along its abdominal cavity continuously forces instances of SCP-4495-1 outward. Instances of SCP-4495-1 superficially resemble porcine intestines. SCP-4495-1 are animate, and behave in a manner roughly analogous to pythons, with the exception of extreme aggression in the presence of animal life. While instances of SCP-4495-1 can be damaged normally, they will reform if given enough time. Exposure to high temperatures delays this process but does not halt it entirely. SCP-4495-1 can only be permanently destroyed through application of Procedure 610 Sinclair. Document 4495-610 Analysis of SCP-4495-1 and details of Procedure 610 Sinclair Analysis of SCP-4495-1 The following is a full-scale analysis of SCP-4495-1, authorized on August 26, 2008, by Director Agatha Drummond, and primarily conducted by Drs. Rivka Yoconi and Daniel Gums. This study was taken under the following assumptions. 1. That SCP-4495 was either related to or intended to resemble a member of the Suede family of animals. Two, that SCP-4495 could be considered alive, dead, or inanimate, but theories which claim inanimacy must remain exclusive from one suggesting a biological origin. 3. 
that if SCP-4495 could only be considered alive or dead, SCP-4495-1 was related to or intended to resemble animal intestines. 4. That SCP-4495 ran the risk of causing an NK-class Grey Goose scenario if a method of permanently destroying SCP-4495-1 was not developed. As stated in SCP-4495's description, SCP-4495-1 resembled porcine intestines. However, instances of SCP-4495-1 are variable in shape and size to the extent that, assuming SCP-4495-1's functions as a theoretical living instance of SCP-4495's intestines, SCP-4495 of the species would either have possessed a theoretically infinite number of vestigial digestive systems or a radically variable diet between individuals. SCP-4495-1 was initially subjected to several rounds of chemical testing. Initial reports concluded that SCP-4495-1 was chemically inert. However, as such a conclusion would necessitate the uses of anomalous disposal methods, the PEPPER protocol was invoked, and chemical testing was to be continued for a period of a week. On September 2, 2008, Junior researcher Malcolm Johnson violated quarantine protocols when he vomited on his prospective batch of SCP-4495-1. Novel chemical reactions were immediately observed. Details of Procedure 610 Sinclair 1. SCP-4495-1 paste is cleansed of grime through a food-safe cleaning mechanism. 2. The resulting paste is then reheated over a period of an hour at 400 degrees Celsius. 3. Paste is separated into a series of measured portions depending on the culinary attitudes of the Foundation. 4. Portions are to be fitted with a fake casing. 5. Portions are to be served to Foundation personnel on standard diet plans in lieu of pork. 6. Unsold portions are to be fed to D-Class personnel as part of URA-2677's containment protocols. 7. Uneaten portions of SCP-4495-1 are to be filtered out of Site-56's waste disposal system, thoroughly cleansed, and retreated with Procedure 610 Sinclair. Extensive experimentation shows that SCP-4495-1 is culinarily similar to common pork, with superior nutritional benefits and lower levels of cholesterol and saturated fats. This is in addition to its longevity. SCP-4495-1, treated with Procedure 610 Sinclair, does not decay, and will remain inanimate for approximately two weeks without additional heat treatment. Most importantly, in addition to providing a better ratio of calorie content, consumption of SCP-4495-1 produces virtually no waste matter. A significant portion of SCP-4495-1 is essentially annihilated upon digestion. Mass implementation of Procedure 610 Sinclair is projected to save a significant amount of money on culinary expenses. Disinformation efforts are underway in the form of increased sanitary regulations.